Hello and welcome back to another episode of Let's Develop Code Hunt. This is Sven speaking and I am happy to have you on board again. Before I start this episode I want to thank uh, my followers on the YouTube channel for the comments they gave me, especially QQQQ and Ingo for the hints about how to successfully complete uh, the levels I didn't manage to uh, get the full skill rating in. Okay, having said this, uh, I want to start right into the next um, sector, which is Sector 8, Nested Loops. As you can see, I didn't do anything so far, so today we'll start with the first task and see how far we can get. Our first task is to sum the factorials between x and y. Um, we have a code piece here that gets into integers which are probably supposed to be x and y and we're supposed to return the sum of the factorials of both. We have a couple of failing test cases so let's see if we can make this work. So um, we, we've seen in the last sectors about loops that uh, apparently in, in multiple occasions it's important to use a recursion instead of loops um, to, to solve the tasks. I'm well aware that recursion and loops are uh, somewhat equivalent up to a certain degree, but um, still I think that a loop is something different than a recursive approach. But anyways, uh, I guess that it's important here uh, in this task to um, to actually do uh, recursive approaches to use a recursive approaches to solve the tasks but just to have this in the back of our minds and uh, go on about solving these tasks so I have I and J actually and I'm supposed to sum up their um, they're factorials. And how is a factorial computed? So actually let me think about this for a second. What I would do in real life, I guess, is use a helper uh, a helper method here to do this computation. And I just want to try out what code hunt uh, is going to say about this. So I'm going to add a method, a static helper method that computes the factorial um, of a number and I'm going to use that one. So this is going to return if x, x is bigger than 1 then we return x times the very same method applied to x minus 1 and in the other case we just return 1 and then I'm going to use this method here to compute a result and I, I want to see what uh, the code hunt tool uh, makes out of this actually there's interesting return values. Let me think about that. So for i3 and j3 your expected result is supposed to be zero, uh, to be null. Um, apparently I did not get the task so far because I don't know. That's not even possible. I cannot assign null to an integer. So my result is null and expected to be null. Um, somehow I think I hit some hidden bug in here because neither in C sharp nor in Java it's possible to return null for an integer. So this is somehow very strange. Um, I managed to solve the case of 2 and 3 and I did not manage to solve the case of 4 and 6 which 
is supposed to be 864, but my result is apparently 744. So I guess, I, st I still guess I got this task somehow wrong. The task is, can you sum the factorials between x and y? So maybe, which would fit, it is, I'm supposed to sum the factorial of 3 plus the factorial of 2 in this case, which I did. Um, but in this case, I'm supposed to sum the factorial of 6 with a factorial of 5 with a factorial of 4, which would make sense. In a way, I'm not sure. I'm not going to compute this in my head, but I'm going to try this out. So um, instead of computing it like that, I would say if i is bigger or equal than j, I'm going to return i times i times puzzle of i minus 1 j. Actually, i is the smaller one, right? So I have to check check if y if y is if j is bigger or equal to i, then I return j. I leave i as it is and reduce j by one. And if that is not the case, I return zero. But that's not it by now because currently I'm missing the factorial. This is to, supposed to be a plus and this should be the factorial actually, the factorial of j. So I'm going to return to my uh, previous idea here of have this factorial of int x computed by return x bigger than 1, in this case return x times factorial factorial of x minus 1, in the other case 1, and I'm going to use this one, the factorial method I just created here. Let me see if that works. Semicolon expected, so apparently I forgot some braces, some... Uh, no, I forgot the semicolon at the end of this line, just as he told me. So let me see if that works. Path bounds exceeded. I'm still not really sure what that actually means, but apparently it somehow broke my editor. So apparently I'm not able to compute the factorial of 64, is that the problem? Strange, but so something broke around here. I'm not actually sure what path bounds exceeded means, but it may be that there's some a call stack related thing here. So maybe I just try to rewrite this as a loop. So I say um, the result is 0 and for um, actually for j bigger or equal than i I'm going to uh, reduce j which is exactly the same I did down here and then I'm going to add to the result the factorial of j and then I'm going to return the results so now it should the, the st call stack depth should be reduced because this is a loop and not a recursion anymore. 
um, then in fact the loop solution would be the right solution for this loops task instead of the recursive solution I did try to insert. But let's first see what happens, especially to this very strange 364 case where uh, the symbolic executor told us that null is supposed to be the value. Yeehaw! Apparently uh, this solved the problem, whatever exactly it was, and it's also, it also became apparent that we were allowed to define helper methods or functions in that case rather um, to help us with the implementation of the actual tasks and that we can still get the full skill rating if we do that. Nice. Let's go on to the next task. What have we got here? We're supposed to capture the code fragment. We get in a number and we're supposed to return a string. And this string is computed by starting with this with an empty string. Then we iterate over all the numbers up to n minus one, starting from zero, and we append a hash. That's what we currently do. Which is apparently somewhat similar to what we are supposed to do but not yet the full truth there have to be some spaces added so my guess would be that we create is there this string constructor I'm not entirely sure actually but i plus one and that concatenated with a space does that work i'm i'm not entirely sure if that's c sharp or or java but i'm i thought this is possible i'm not entirely sure maybe maybe this is c sharp word in the java world or not translated, I'm not really sure, but of course I could do this also with a loop. Um, but for beginners, let's stay with this solution, just recompile it to see what's going on here. So now we have the right solution, but we have a sharp too few for the, for the second case. And since we're in nested loops here, um, I'm going to do this j smaller than i plus or let's do it smaller equal one j plus plus and then this loop at the hashes and in the outer loop output plus equals at the space Um, and if we then, oh, that's the point, if we then don't fail to insert braces, semicolons or stuff, then we actually capture the whole thing, but we don't get the full skill rating yet, so I'm gonna keep trying. Mm, maybe I can improve the skill by uh, by uh, writing a helper method for the for the inner loop part, which is um, uh, b -b 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 create n hashes and n, which is string output equals to empty string, and then we do this inner loop stuff here. be nice to have refactoring tools available and then return the output and in this case here we just say create n hashes with i uh, plus one and we do it like that and then we should have an equivalent solution 
operand of a binary infix operator has unknown type. Unknown type. Binary infix operator. We have infix operators here. We have operators here, but that should be all right. Regarding the type, I'm not really sure where this error comes from. So I'm going to just try to figure out where the actual error is. Ah. There's no I here. Interesting error message. So let's see if I actually make all the variables resolvable. We still don't get the full skill points for this task. Maybe we can do this somewhat shorter using recursion again in this case. So let's replace this one here by uh, return n bigger than zero, return, uh, return actually hash plus create n hashes of s n minus one or else we return the empty string is a little shorter. Let me see, should create the same outputs, but still doesn't get me the full skill rating. Maybe if I reduce the same the, the first method in the same way. Can I actually do that? I can't do that this easy, can I? Ah, I can. Return if n is bigger than zero, then create puzzle of n minus one plus um, create n hashes of n plus a space and in the other case I don't really know this should be equivalent it's a lot shorter but apparently I missed a brace here so it solves the task but it still does not give me the full skill rating so if you have any ideas how to do that in Java uh, please drop me a comment, let me know. I have a couple of ideas how I could do this in C Sharp, but I won't try it out in this episode. Speaking of which, I think this is it for now. This is going to be where I end the, this episode. Thank you all for watching. If you like what I'm doing, please consider to subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Twitter. I post regular updates on what I do. And you may also want to have a look at the other projects I'm doing, like the Let's Develop with Maven and Eclipse or the Let's Develop Conway's Game of Life. Okay, that's it. If you have any feedback, drop me a comment, let me know. I uh, can always improve on your comments and I hope to see you next time. Goodbye.